How's it going everybody? I just wanted to show you uh, the fix for Battlefield 6 crashes. Um, this was something that was really frustrating me, especially as somebody that's pretty decent with computers and figuring stuff out. Um, you know, there's a lot of reports you see that their dice is fault, the coding's messed up, there's different errors that are shooting or, you know, crashing the desktop and there's nothing in Event Viewer. There's no notice of any driver crashes or things like that. So it's kind As of like a PlayStation that. player, it's been very laggy since the update. I've had a lot yeah. of resets. Yeah, it's it's uh, they got to get their stuff together. But well, I've been losing a lot of firefights because it keeps resetting my server like a couple seconds lag beyond what it should be. All right, so. Now I'm going to back out. I'm going to show you. I had my metrics up, okay? And basically the reason for the crashes are this game is very sensitive to GPU clocks and overclocks, okay? Now I'm not overclocking, but I am specifically using an AMD card. I know this is happening with NVIDIA. It doesn't have anything to do with your game settings or things like that. Although I do run things pretty general, okay? Here's my... Um, I have a 9070 XT Nitro Plus, and my my graphics settings are just, um, I do ultra on these three, and then I do high on the rest of them, pretty much, um, across the board. So, I needed, so up here, when I was gaming, you could see my clocks were like 3200, okay? Um, and I'm going to go back to the desktop now and show you. Um, this right here okay so the issue with a lot of people is their gpu is clocking too high you might have microsoft um you might have msi afterburner running you might uh have overclock settings on there from a previous card or it's always been stable um but with these new AAA titles they're very demanding and they shoot short bursts not only with g uh power supply power, but also with GPU clocks, okay? So I before having my 9070 XT, as you can see here, 9070 XT, uh, before having that, I had a 6900 XT. And with that, it ran a little bit more stable. It wasn't as powerful as this one, obviously. So I used to always run my power limit here plus 10%, okay? And it's hypothetically giving more power headroom to the to the to the card, okay, which could essentially cause more heat, higher clocks, etc. So, what I do is I moved everything back to uh, basically stock, okay. I have no frequency offset, so this is your clock frequency. So if I wanted to overclock, I would slide this up. If I wanted to undervolt, I would slide this down, okay. This is being on zero. This is default um and these things these cards are already overclocked out of the factory you could see my card if you watch back the beginning of the video my gpu clock while gaming was pretty um high it was like 3200 sometimes 3300 um and if you look online let's do nitro plus 9070 xt boost clock you can look up your card, okay? Here's right from Sapphire's website. Look at this. GPU boost clock, 3060. Now, XFX says up to whatever. This just says boost clock 3060. So it's hard to tell if this is the minimum boost clock or if this is the up to boost clock. I'm hoping this is the minimum because my card, I don't know if it's silicone lottery, but you saw this GPU clock was running at 3200 on stock settings, okay? And basically, the issue is, I think for split seconds, people are people's GPU clocks are going above their board's limit. And I'll show you how to really find that limit. A good tool I like to use is um, Hardware Info 64, okay? And what you want to do is, before you start gaming, load up the sensors only, and then minimize it. You can see it's running down here in the tray while I'm gaming. And you might think, well, I don't want to run stuff while I'm gaming. Uh, I'll show you how little you uh, 
let's look at Hardware Info 64, uses 49.3 megabytes of RAM. It's almost nothing, and it's a great diagnostic tool, okay? So let's go into Hardware Info 64. All right, here's your CPU info, and you can you can shrink some of these. Really what I keep up is the CPU info, and I keep up the GPU or the, the motherboard info so I can see my fan speeds while I'm gaming, okay? And if let's go down to the GPU, okay, here's your temps. You wanna make sure temps are good, and that's another thing with the power limit. You're still gonna get the same performance. So keep this power limit at zero or even minus five or minus 10% if you have a power supply that is risky. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by risky. Okay, look at this, GPU clock. I went up to 33.05 for a split second. I didn't see that up here, but it went up to 33.05. Look at my GPU frequency limit for my card, 34.50. So a lot of these crashes to desktop are happening because your GPU is clocking too high. Now I'm keeping a close eye on this. Because when I, I started getting more crashes when I went from my 6900 XT to my 9070 XT. And I'm like, what the heck, man? So the other issue is, look at this. G total board power limit, 330 watts when I set this to zero. If I put this up to 10%, this will change next time you reload hardware info to 360-something watts. But look at this. GPU max power. Look at this transient spike. 500 for a split second 536.4 watts was pulled now if you look at the board power on average while playing battlefield up in here live it's about three it's pulling about 330 watts 325 to 330 watts which is normal that's what it's rated for um but i noticed my clock speed also while playing fortnite or marvel rivals is about 3200 3300 so my these these new GPUs are really meant to push their limits. And if you give it the thermal headroom and up this power, it's going to go gung-ho and it might overclock to the point, especially if you keep your computer very cool, it might push clocks too high for Battlefield or for Battlefield's liking. You also might be under the assumption you have a powerful or good power supply and it might not be enough. And that was one of the cases with me. I'm not sure exactly what fixed the crashing issue, but I'm gonna show you right now the three major things that I did, okay? So I'm keeping an eye on my clocks. If it ever does crash back to desktop, I can come into hardware info and I would basically look right here and I would see this GPU clock went over this 3450. I might see 3480 here. And that would be a good indicator that, you know what? I gotta actually offset my frequency down 100 you're not going to see a major performance decrease, I, I promise you. And then you would apply your settings, okay? Um, you can also import and save your settings. That way, if you have a driver crash, I can look, import, desktop, PC utility. I save it right here, 9070 XT import. It will bring all my settings right back. Or you can save different ones, okay? The thing I do, the th only thing I set now with these new powerful cards is a fan curve. Uh, I do an aggressive fan curve to keep it cool. Okay, my, my hotspot and temps were pretty good if you watch back to while I was playing Battlefield. Um, but it is giving it thermal headroom to clock high. So it's not just Battlefield. It's it's And if you watch anybody using a 9070 XT um, on YouTube uh, doing tests for 1440p, whatever, you'll see like Spider-Man clocks 3200. These cards are clocking high um, right out of the factory. And another fix... Uh, might have been if you guys saw in the news let's see windows 11 december amd if you look at the news here there was a uh, security update that came out in december which fixes amd amd gpu crash issues okay so you want to make sure your windows updates are all up to date uh that fix was really big it was the kb5072033 uh, which was the major December update. So that should be out by now if you have Windows 11. Um, the other thing I did was I purchased a new power supply. I got this one right here. My uh, my 9070 XT has the dedicated PCIe 5.1 cable, which is down right here, um, which is the you know the 12 volt two by six uh, cord. 
And with that cord and the fact that this is a ATX 3.1 and 1,000 watts, I went from an 850 ATX 3.0 to 1000 ATX 3.1. These are better rated to handle those transient spikes I was showing you of 500, look at that, 536 watts on my old 850 watt, plus whatever the CPU is doing, plus whatever all my fans are doing and the drives and the, the AIO and, and whatnot. So I thought to myself, man, I probably pushed 850 pretty close and it might have kicked i had a couple times where my computer crashed and fully restarted while playing battlefield and i had a lot of other times where it just crashes to desktop so i want you to use especially uh, i want you to use hardware info 64 keep an eye on your clocks you can use the metrics um in in here this is the metric overlay that i'm using for amd um but don't go crazy with your sliders um and keep everything stock or even under, lower your frequency a little bit by maybe one or 200 and try that, okay? Um, and I also did a fresh Windows install. So those were my big three. I did a fresh Windows install. I set all of this back to stock settings, zero power limit, uh, which is 330 watts. Um, and I'm keeping an eye on my clocks and basically that's it it's super sensitive to overclocks you got to know your board's main clock power um your your main effective clock here you know mine like i said is 3450 uh so if you i'm sure everybody's tried everything else like checking for errors and checking for disk errors um, you could check your ram too you know maybe turn xmp off if 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 your xmp is crazy high um, that being said though this is what i use for my graphics settings in amd very basic i keep this on in case i do use fsr in certain games like oblivion remastered i like to use it i don't use it for battlefield um, I, I used to use amd anti-lag i don't really do that anymore I do use the uh, image sharpening, um, but I don't. I don't have a lot of this stuff on, and that's basically it. So, really analyze if your PSU or your power supply is up to snuff. Keep an eye on your GPU clocks, okay? And you could check for that Windows update or do a fresh Windows install if you want. It might be overkill, but. So far, so good for me. I've had nothing crash with those new upgrades. It's tough because the 9070 XT will tell you, you know, it'll say it recommends a power supply of 700 or 750. I, and I had an 850, so you think you're good. But to be honest, I, uh, I the 1,000 watt is just so much better, especially with the ATX 3.1 rating and that dedicated power cable specifically for these kinds of cards. It handles those transient power spikes really well. And yeah, Hardware Info 64 is just awesome because you can really kind of see what's going on, how your temps are, but and more importantly, the clocks. Um, and so, yeah, I hope this helps you. Leave a comment or a question. Uh, please subscribe. I also stream and do a bunch of other stuff on my channel. So uh, the support would be awesome. And I hope this really helped you out. Uh, for me, it was really frustrating because it's like, I have a good rig. Like, my computer is cool. I put a lot of money into it. Like, what the hell is going on? And just these new cards are are crazy. And I'm sure with driver updates and stuff, it'll, it'll be better. So, um, yeah. Good luck, everybody. And shoot a comment or a question. I respond to almost everything that comes in. Uh, cheers and happy holidays.